You may have noticed this knife in some of my recent YouTube videos. I use the knife for everything from cooking and eating to creating tinder to start a fire. It's just a good all purpose tool. The knife was actually hand forged by a guy here in Arkansas out of a 1986 Chevy C20 leaf spring. Uh, everything about that sentence is just cool to me, so much so that I actually reached out to him and asked if I could bring some cameras to his shop and film his process, interview him about it, and make a video out of it. He was really gracious to allow me to go do that. So what you're about to see is probably in my top 10 favorite videos we've done on the channel so far. I just had an incredible time, and I think you guys are gonna really enjoy watching this. I did go ahead and put some chapters down below in case you do wanna jump to certain points. However, I'd encourage you to watch this one start to finish. I think every second is gonna be worth your time. Enjoy. I'm here with Michael Pruitt of Pruitt Knives of Valor, which is the coolest name ever. So Michael uh, and I kind of connected over this knife that I purchased from him that he made. And I was just super fascinated by the process, like what got him into this and the way he does it. I'm, I have no kind of background in any of this stuff. And so it was interesting to me. And then as I kind of started sharing about what Michael did, it just was resonating with everybody. Like the fact that, you know, you're using like old leaf spring metal to make this stuff, which is so cool. So I just want to take a second and talk with you, talk about like what got you into this? What's the purpose? Is this just a hobby? Where do you see this going in the future? It started off just fun, something to do with my kids that could, could potentially turn into a business. Sure. Um, so that I could get, just get them involved, kind of a family family business kind of thing. I, been, I thought it was cool for a long time, and then about a year ago, um, Jason uh, Hawk on Mountain Men, mm -hmm. uh, History Channel's Mountain Men, uh, just kind of he he was probably the inspiration that got me like I could I could actually do this. Yeah. Um, the awesome shit. Because he does he does such cool things with recycled material. Mm -hmm. um, and so I started researching like you can you can get into it for super cheap or you can put a lot, ton of money into it. And so I, I just started finding things that I could recycle or used tools or you know the leaf springs I thought was really cool because you know one it can come off of a really awesome car like the ones I use come right. off of a 1986 Chevy C20 right. nice half ton pickup and. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like that's just got some cool history to it. Yeah. Um, but I just like recycling the materials that I can. Were you seeking out this specific part or was this like, I just went on and this is what was available? Like, what? how did that work? Initially, no, but in my search for finding good steel, that wasn't gonna cost me a lot of money. Yeah. I found out leaf springs are a good high carbon steel. Yeah. They hold a good edge, they get, they get good and hard. You know, whenever you see like knives and how they're made, a lot of times you'll see like the metal alloy or the type of steel. I don't know what I'm talking about, but they'll put like the, yeah. you know, that number or whatever. The steel they use, right. yeah. The steel they use. One of the things that's super cool with me is like yours just said like 86 Chevy or whatever. Oh like man, yeah. The fact that I started sharing that with some buddies. Yeah, all of us think knives are cool and use them regularly we can't, but started sharing that with some buddies and everybody was just like, okay, like who's this dude? How do I get a knife? It's <laughs> super cool. It's so much fun and uh, cathartic. Yeah, yeah. Working with your hands, therapeutic. Something you mentioned earlier, you said trying to figure out something that you could do with your kids and incorporate mm -hmm. that. I think a lot of us that got into overlanding that have kids um, got into this uh, because we saw it as a tool that we could use to make these memories with our families and do something with them, not just go like disappear. And so I think that's cool how you said that, you know, part of this was. To, to bring them in, all of that. Yeah. This is not like an, an efficient way of manufacturing knives. <laughs> you know, in terms of like, if you just turn and burn, we're trying to get as many out, you're gonna sell these in Walmart. So obviously in the way you do it. But I think this type of thing, this type of craft really resonates, at least with me, because there just seems so much more care, uniqueness, you've heard the phrase, you know, buy it nicer, buy it twice. I think 
purchasing in something that is probably going to outlive you. Oh yeah. You know, that's a really cool feeling, like something that I'll get to use as a tool every day, but then know that this is like something that can be a hand-me-down, you know, that can, I, I love that aspect of yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, each knife I make probably takes about 15 hours, give or take. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it's very much a quality over quantity craft. I love it. All right, so let's just get into the process. We're gonna just kind of shoot around and show how this is done, and I think you guys are gonna dig it. It was always on fire, our house, our Dancing on a wire, reckless, it seems. We found holes in these walls. We like what we saw. Seems so strong until it falls. The final fall. Absolutely incredible. These are amazing. The fact that you're doing this in your garage like this old school way is super awesome. I just thank you so much for like showing us around. Yeah, dude. Letting us see uh, how you work. All right, so if you're interested, make sure you hit him up, get in line, get your Christmas gift ordered before he's too booked up. And dude, again, just thank you so much for showing us. Yeah, thank you. Glad to have you guys. Yeah. Perfect. Ah! Well, now all the, the knives are broken, so <laughs> you guys can't order anything. So... I'm booked. <laughs> the best way to get a hold of Michael to get an order in is on Facebook or Instagram. He goes by Pruitt Knives of Valor on both platforms, and I've put a link down in the description below. If you wanna hop over there, follow him, shoot him a message. If you've got maybe an idea for a knife that you'd like to get made, talk to him about that. I have a buddy who just went on a elk hunting trip out in Montana, and he actually got knives made to commemorate the trip, which is a great idea. And he had the um, the name of the trip etched in the blade along with the date. Michael accommodated that. Also, Michael's really good about like posting what knives he's finished that are not pre-sold. So you might be able to see one that's already done and just snag that one real quick. Or you can do like what I did, which was just to reach out to him and say, hey, I'm gonna use this primarily for camping and overlanding. It needs to be tough, needs to hold the edge. It needs to stand up to some abuse. And then I just let Michael design this one for me and it's perfect. The older I get, the more I just really value products that perform as advertised and that are low maintenance. It just seems like an overlanding, we're constantly having to repair stuff. It, it gets exhausting. Now, I know firsthand, I just got done replacing my transmission, 
my starter and regearing the truck. And we're in the process of actually buying a home right now. So my bank account needs some love. It just feels like we're constantly having to repair flat tires. And I know that's part of you know what we signed up for when we got into this, but it sure is nice when something, even if it's small and seemingly kind of insignificant, like a knife, sure is nice when you have something that's durable, that doesn't break, that holds an edge. You're not having to run down to Cabela's to pick up a new one every couple of years. You know, it's just made to last. There's just not enough companies out there that are doing that. And so when I find one, I'm gonna promote the heck out of them. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, like, comment, sub, all that YouTube stuff helps the algorithm. As we close, I want to suggest two videos. Actually, the first one YouTube suggested, they think you're going to like this one. Uh, but the second one I'm suggesting, this one down here, The Hunt for Erskine's Grave, it's actually an incredibly fascinating story. And if you haven't seen it yet, I hope you'll check it out. And remember, the more you camp, the less deer the aliens abduct.